Wish we had more time to spare Want you around me like air Can't get my feelings in more And then you not be there And to my eyes you was there Show me I'm helping people, bitch People like us are so rare So rare, so rare So rare, so rare I wanna keep you around People like us are so rare So rare, so rare What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, damn YouTube, it's your girl that got it, then I'm back, ooh, with another one, with another one, Go yes. girl. Alright guys, today's video is gonna be about two movies, two TV, I mean, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna talk about three TV shows, not movies, but TV shows. Actually, it was more than three, it was like four or five. That tell you how um dark energy works entity attachment works but we don't know because a lot of us aren't aware or enlightened on the way that this works the way that what it what this really is okay we've been kind of ignorant to what this really is and anyways before we get into the video, though, I'm going to need you to like, comment, subscribe, and share your meme. You are more than welcome to think that anything I say on this channel is a bunch of time foolery. You are more than welcome to think that anything I say is crazy or that I am crazy and that many psychiatric help. You are more than welcome to disagree with anything I say on this channel because why? What you think is valid in your world. Let me repeat that. What you think is valid in your world. Okay? So if you think fairies and mermaids are real, this is the channel for you. You think... If you think Bigfoot and Sasquatch is real, this is the channel for you. If you think aliens exist, this is the channel for you. This channel is about freedom of thought. Think how you want to think. I'm not here to persuade you to believe what I believe. I'm just here to provoke thoughts. Shake some shit up a little bit, okay? <laughs> Alright. Now let's get into the video. Alright, so... Today, this video is going to be about shows that I've watched that showed and taught us what in negative entity or dark entity attachments are and how they work. And then I'm going to talk about one show that's about twin flames or what I, what I believe to be the representation of what twin flames are, okay? So... Everybody went crazy over they clone Tyrone. But there have been plenty of other shows that showed us things, that told us things about what, about what this reality really is, but nobody talked about those. Um, you know, people, people talk about The Simpsons a lot and how The Simpsons predicted almost every tragical event or they say predicted they say it's predicted right by every tragical event that has happened to us way way before it happened so but the first vid, the first show that I want to speak on, that what I want to speak about is Raising Dion on Netflix. I don't think people see the people don't see this. They don't see that the spiritual part of Raising Dion. So this gonna be a spoiler alert if you have never watched the show, but Dion is a young boy who he is considered a power uh, kid a kid who has powers right but when you watch the show the powers are that these kids have are kids who have the ability to you know move things with their minds with their hands you know uh, create electricity but Dion was very special so Dion he had powers he had specific powers but 
Dion had the ability to create his own powers, uh, to create different powers, should I say. So if Dion wanted to do something, Dion could just think it and had the ability to do it. Well, as others, the other kids just had fixed ability. They had fixed powers. So, Dion, on the second season, Dion became friends with this young boy, this little boy who lost his parents. And this little boy, because of that, he was vulnerable. He uh, was a, he felt abandoned. So remember I told you in previous videos, if y'all have watched my previous videos, that dark energy, the dark, and it actually, well, I'm going to get to that. Dark energy feeds off of your trauma. It feeds off of it. And I'm about to show you, I'm about to explain to you how in Raising Dion, how it, how it shows that, how it very thoroughly explains and, and uh, teaches how the entities feed off your trauma so yeah the guy the little boy well, yeah he felt abandoned he felt all of these things right so in the first in the first season Dion lost his dad to the darkness they call it the darkness on the show um you know the the, the darkness is this like in the show it's this dark energy that's like that seems very that it's like extremely strong and extremely powerful and it has the ability to persuade people into doing what it wants it to do to create destruction so Dion lost his dad to that darkness and in the second season the little boy the darkness attached itself to the little boy and the darkness would say things like um so like i said it would feed off its trauma so the darkness would tell the little boy like because the, the darkness is trying to get to dion because dion is considered he's a special one he's like the chosen one right <laughs> and dion uh the darkness wants to destroy dion because dion is it is it's is the threat Dion is its kryptonite. It is it is the it is a threat to that darkness because Dion is so powerful. So, anyways, the the little kid, I mean, the darkness used the little boy to get to Dion. So, like I said, the 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 darkness used like the god, the boy, the little boy's uh, parents dying, his uh, the um, being abandoned, and all of these things. To and bl told, convince the little boy to blame Dion. Dion is the reason why, because Dion, you know what I'm saying, like li really, really persuading this little boy's mind into using his abilities to manipulate Dion, and then promising the little boy. I forgot what the little boy's name was, but promising the little boy things. If he did these things to Dion. And the little boy would create, like, try to create destruction and try to destroy, you know, Dion. Kind of made the, it fed the darkness. The little boy fed the darkness by believing in it, feeding it. He fed it. So he believed the darkness. He believed what the darkness was telling him. He was, com he was easily persuaded. He was convinced of what this darkness was telling him to do and in in that and as a result of that the little boy tried to help this darkness destroy Dion and his family his mom and you know whoever but at the end of the last the last episode the little boy he was mentally he became mentally strong enough to defeat to not let that to, to, to uh, become aware enough to be strong enough to know that Dion has done nothing to him but be a good friend to him and that it wasn't Dion's fault and that Dion and his mother loved him so even at the end 
he stopped listening to that darkness and that and and once he stopped listening to that darkness the darkness faded or you know it 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 detached itself from it detached itself from uh the little boy and tried to find its and went to try to find its next victim so anyways if you have not watched raising dion watch that it's really really fire it's considered a little kids movie but it is far from little it's far from childish it's far from kitty it's not kitty at all it's really actually good it's it's enlightening and i was like oh wow i'm gonna use this for a youtube video create for content for my youtube channel so that's reason dion all right so now we're gonna talk about the princess and the frog all right so as you know the princess and the frog was based well if you haven't seen the movie it's based in new orleans louisiana okay yeah french quarter voodoo town like i be saying on all my videos right <laughs> so the prince he wanted he was you know trying to look for a princess a wife but he did not want an arranged marriage he wanted to pick a wife that he actually was in love with so the uh tiana she wanted her enough money to open her restaurant and so she got the idea of you know what if i marry a prince or somebody gave her the idea i don't remember i haven't seen the movie in a while but somebody gave her the idea like oh there's a prince you can marry the prince he got enough money to you know give you what you want so anyways the prince and his servant or whatever butler comes across this character called the shadow man and he is the voodoo priestess so he invites the prince in and so into his little room or whatever wherever his little place of work is <laughs> in a French Quarter right and so the voodoo man is saying I could give you whatever you want but he didn't tell the prince that what he wanted came with a catch so you know how Disney Channel have their little songs the song that he was singing was called Friends on the Other Side so he's like singing the song got my friends on the other side and then if you take a look around the, the, the little room, there's always there's these a bunch of these little entities like dancing around. Like I got friends on the other side, these little spirits, these little dark these little dark spirits. And he, there was even a part where he uh, looked like he was talking to his shadow, his shadow self. So if y'all are if y'all know what, or if y'all believe in multi-dimensional, that we're multi-dimensional beings, and I explain the multi-dimensions and the dimensions in my video title, if I'm crazy, you crazy too, y'all go watch it, like, comment, subscribe, and share, hear me, <laughs> but anyways, um, I explain that, so if you want to know more about that, go to that video, watch it, but anyways, so... Where I explained we're in the, that we're in the third dimension. So your shadow self or your lower self will be like in the second dimension, right? Your your shadow. So he's talking to his two-dimensional self. And you can see you can see that he like consults. Like he operates, so I feel like that was representation of the fact that he operates from his shadow, from his shadow self. He consults his shadow self. He makes decisions based on his shadow self, right? And I also mentioned that hell is considered to be below us in religious texts, and heaven is considered to be above us. So your higher self will be like your heaven self, God self, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, besides that, um, so 
he told him he was like, I could, I could give you, I could bring you your princess. I could give you whatever you want. So, <laughs> so he gives, uh, he does the little spell to bring him to toward Tiana. He told Tiana, Hey, I can, I can, uh, you can be with a prince. All you gotta do is kiss the frog. So what they do is they make deals with these entities, but it always comes with a catch. They always want something in return. So I talked about people giving them offerings and, you know, uh, you know, certain things in return in exchange for the manifestation, the material that you want to be materialized. So in real life, that would come that could come in the form of well in the princess and a the frog they turned into frogs that was the catch but in real life that could be that could manifest itself as a death in a family a soul a sacrifice or it could come with your you know it could attach itself to your soul to your spirit you know it i give you this but it in exchange for you for your soul or somebody, somebody, you need to sacrifice something for me, or you know whatever it may be. So, anyways, um, you know, take somebody. It could be in the form of you know causing destruction or causing chaos in somebody else's life. Like I don't do this, but you gotta give me this. Basically, you gotta do this. If you want this, you gotta do this for it. But anyways. At the end, when Tiana uh, broke the spell, when Tiana broke the spell, she, they weren't frogs anymore. So, in that scene when she, when Tiana broke the spell, the shadow man got scared. He was like, <gasps> like scared because, and then you see all of these shadow beings behind him his friends on the other side and it looked like and it's a graveyard behind him and he's like shivering because these entities is like coming to get him because it's like now nah, you owe like they were supposed to stay frogs now you owe us now you owe us debt now you owe us so when people do them sac so when somebody is sacrificed in real life that's karmic debt that that debt is on your hands that debt is on your hands. That karma is on your hands. So they be dealing with these. So they be dealing with these trickster, manipulative, dark entities, dark deities, and spirits. And he consult. He he talked to his shadow self. He operated from his shadow self. So and so, which means that he he was also manipulative. So he manipulated the prince into you know going with whatever that was whatever you know the spell in hopes that he would get his princess and he spent the whole time being a frog but you know at the end of course he the spell and he lived happily ever after so that's that's the princess and a frog now we're going to talk about a show called legacies so legacies is a sequel or a spin-off to the original show called the originals and the that show was about vampires were, werewolves and witches and guess where it was based at new orleans <laughs> new orleans louisiana Town. like i told you okay like like most stuff is when it's about voodoo when it's about that kind of stuff it's, they always it's always in louisiana it's either in like the deep like bayou Bayou, you, buy you, or it's in little it's in New Orleans in the French Quarter. But anyways, I don't know if y'all see Eve's Bayou, but that shit, that that movie was hard. It was hard, and it was like based in like the deep, deep Bayou, Cajun, uh, swamp town. That's my mama said she saw uh, cause that's the kind of town my mama is from, and I to believe that her, I believe that that uh grave, uh, one of the graveyards, or one of the churches, or one of something. The houses or something was in the little town that she's from, Napoleonville. So, anyways, that's besides the point. Um, legacy. 
Okay, so Nick Klaus in the originals, Nick Klaus was like the most powerful magical being because he was a hybrid. He was a he was a vampire and a werewolf, I believe. And then he had a baby with a witch, which made him, which made her a hybrid. So they made so the sequel, the spinoff is of his of Nick Klaus's children and all the children of them. And this man created a school for these special kids. Now, his two sisters, forgot the other sister's name, but the one we're going to be talking about specifically, her name is Josie. Josie opened herself up to dark magic, to black magic, and she became destructive. She became evil, manipulative, etc., etc., all because she opened herself up to the black magic so like i said the black magic dark energy is manipulative so she was able to get what she need what she wanted with the black magic but once she opened herself up to it and it you know it attached to her or it went into her right or yeah it went into her the magic went into her it was in her so she, so Josie started began to operate out of her lower self. So she began. So Josie was a witch. She began to use the magic in a very negative, destructive way, in a very manipulative, evil way. And the and the, the black magic is super strong too. Like it's strong, like heavy. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, the reason why she wanted to, the reason why she opened herself up to it in the first place was because she needed to save her sister who had been, uh, what you call that? Uh, possessed. She was possessed by a demon. And the only way to get the demon out of her sister was to, was to stab her with the sword of black magic. And Josie was like, uh-uh, I ain't killing my sister you think this is <laughs> I ain't about to kill my sister so Josie said look I'm gonna siphon all this black magic out of this sword and then banish that mug out of you like whoosh. so she took so she took all the black magic which is strong and heavy and evil and like and then like banished that mug out of her like literally lifted that mug lifted that demon out of her but that that black magic ended up staying in her they didn't know how to get it out but eventually she became strong enough mentally mentally strong enough because like i said that dark magic it is manipulative so it'll feed off of like things that you know uh, for your traumas off of your fears off of your insecurities and it will feed off of those aspects, those shadow aspects of yourself to create anger and rage and, uh, you know, all of these negative emotions. And then you, and then she started to use that energy, the black magic, to cause destruction. But she eventually became strong enough mentally to get, to detach that black magic from her, to get it out of her. You know, and she became back Josie. <laughs> so that is another one now we're going to talk about the school of good and evil now, I talked a little bit about this one in my video titled uh, God is everything right so but I didn't I didn't go into detail so at the beginning of the movie it's two brothers good versus evil the, the evil brother killed the good brother so that he could take over the school and make the world and make the school evil, make the world evil. Now, in that video, that previous video, I talked about it was two best friends that lived in a village. And one of the best friends wanted to go to that school so bad, but she thought she was going to the school for good. She was, she didn't even realize that she was handpicked by evil to come to that school. Yeah, handpicked. That's why her desire was so strong to get to that school, right? So, anyways, long story short, 
evil, the evil brother used to come to her in visions. Like she would, every time she would look in the mirror, he would like appear in the mirror and tell her, feed her lies and illusions. You know, give her visions of her of her best friend saying saying certain things, but it would be half of what she said. Like the like he would he would show her half of what she said to create the illusion of the fact that to create the illusion that her best friend didn't with her no more. Didn't like her no more. Or thought that she was better than her because she was on a good side. So best friend, so the evil best friend fed that. She fed into she fed into what or she believed the illusion. She fed into the illusions that evil was creating in her mind and her thoughts that tried to pursue to persuade her to become this evil person and turn against her best friend. Now, of course, at the end of the movie, she became mentally strong enough to the point where she didn't feed into that evil. She didn't feed into it no more, right? And she ended up, you know, saving the school, bringing back balance to the school, or defeat, you know, killing, killing the evil brother. So, basically, long story short, or to some, not long story short, but to sum up all of those movies about dark magic, that's pretty much what I've been saying in all my videos prior to this one. Go check them out if you haven't. Is that dark energy is manipulative. So when people are sending, or so when you are dealing with negative energy and you are downloading these thoughts, these negative thoughts, and you accept them as your own, and you begin to become destructive or either self-destructive or destructive to other people outside of you. Um, it's because you fed. It's because you fed into. The negative thoughts that you, that you downloaded and or and or came to your mind and was and think and was thinking. So illusions. When people do dark magic, they create they're creating illusions, and those illusions manifest themselves as thought forms. Like I said in other in previous videos, that's exactly what I've been, been explaining in all of these videos and these movies and these TV shows have shown me that. Have, uh, have been teaching these movies and TV shows have been teaching us that but we were so we're only we were so focused on they clone Tyrone that we didn't see the other stuff that we not seeing the other stuff we not seeing the spiritual stuff that they trying to show us we just think that that's fairy tale but we 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 really believe they clone like a lot of people really believe clone they clone Tyrone I mean to, I mean like really for, and I'm not saying they clone Tyrone was like yeah, but I'm saying there's so many other other stuff that teaches us about about uh, darkness, okay? The dark energy, the stuff that I be talking about. Last but not least, we're going to talk about Bridgerton. So Bridgerton is a representation, a show that's a representation of what I think Twin Flames are. So the first season was like the runner chaser dynamic. So the runner chase the dynamic on the first season was like the uh, Duke. The Duke had childhood, had some childhood trauma, and that childhood trauma led him to believe that he wasn't good enough, or you know that he wasn't, yeah, that he just wasn't good enough. So he thought that his uh, the Duchess. I forgot her name, her real her name in the show, but the Duchess that he married, he thought that she wouldn't love him if, you know, that she wouldn't really love him if she, you know, got to know him for who he really was because he was dead set on thinking that he wasn't, right? So, I'm going to make this short. Long story short, the Duchess was like, Duke. I love you like I love you <laughs> I don't care about whatever you think is wrong with you I love that part of you too you know so he would run he would um 
so prior to him saying prior to her saying that he would run like he would distance himself he would try to like you know he had one foot in and one foot out because he couldn't resist her he couldn't really resist her but he couldn't be with her at the same time because he felt like he wasn't good enough so it was just like this runner chaser dynamic so she's like what is wrong what's wrong with me she thinking it's her she you know everything but anyways happily ever after right stop running from me i love every part of you period and so yeah happily ever after now second season it's my favorite season because the second season is about the mirroring effect the mirror, the mirror mirroring soul effect right so the mirroring soul effect was heavy so it's two very strong you know so the girl came i think her name was uh the little the younger daughter name the younger daughter name was edwina the oldest daughter name was kate kate did not want to get married kate was 26 she never married she uh she was there really to get her her 18 year old uh sister a husband right because she wanted to marry so anyways long story short the vicon or whatever i think that's i think that's what he was that's his title the vicon whatever he thought that he wanted a woman based on you know very surface level uh things you know and then he was the type of person that he was the type of person that would he didn't court like he didn't go on dates with these women he set up interviews and asked them questions like it's like a like a child like <laughs> that's the type of person he was he was and he was not he was very stoic he wasn't um he wasn't like the type of person that wanted to uh be in love and he didn't want to be in love because he saw what happened to his to his mom when his dad passed his mother his mother was like depressed for years and years and years when his father died and he was like i can't put myself through that much pain so he vowed to not like love you know so he was picking women based on like their looks based on like their uh like their looks their intellect and then like their ability to be impressionable or naive they're they're not i'm not gonna say naive but like yeah i'm gonna say impressionable and how impressionable they were they are they are right so then he meets kate who is this strong independent uh you know does things on her own terms don't listen to what nobody gotta say she do things by herself for herself whatever right so she was and she was educated she knew a lot she was educated and well and it was enlightened on a lot of things and the viacon it was used to i'm just gonna call him lord lord bridgerton lord bridgerton was used to people being submissive to him he's used to women running behind him used to women being submissive to him he's used to women he's used to being the person that's the best at whatever it is and then she come along being better or being just as good so which means that he lost you know he lost to her you know she you know all of these things so he wanted to, he wanted her little he, he at first he thought he wanted her little sister at Duina but he could not resist even though they butt heads so because she was so strong and intelligent and, 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 and educated and you know independent he was just he was so that he caused them to butt heads like, why don't you just agree with me why don't you just be like, like every why don't you just be like every other woman like you know what i'm saying <laughs> and she like no I don't take all this from you. Oh, <laughs> I don't take 
Horas por mil. Blá, bata, pau, rana, you. So, <laughs> anyways, so that's what he was, he was used to people just doing what he says. And him be, and, and, and being good at everything and being the best at everything. And she came along being just like that, just like him. And he hated it. But at the same time, he loved it and couldn't resist it. They could not even, re they couldn't resist each other. They couldn't resist each other. It was like, we're alike. And that's causing us to bump heads because we both strong and stubborn and want things on our own terms. But at the same time, it's like, bruh, I cannot. I am so attracted to you. I cannot resist you. So, long story short, at the end of the day, at the end of the whole season, they got together and lived happily ever after, okay? <laughs> So that is the examples of how the twin flame journey, the runner chase and dynamic and the mirroring of souls because we are mirroring every part of each other, even the parts that we don't like, you know, the same insecurities, the same fears, the same this, but the same intelligence, the same uh, uh, aspirations, the same goals in life, like the same everything. So. That's all I have for you guys today. And y'all have a good one. And don't forget to not be a hoe today. All right? And for the hoes, let's work on stop being hoes. All right? All right.